What's up, Snail? Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today, we're going to be blasting the loss track of the four burials split. To pass away, death march towards my ruin. I love loss, hailing from Tennessee. Probably one of the first funeral doom bands I really got into. And still one of my favorites i mean i remember they started gaining a lot of popularity when they got on profound lore and they put out a real great record but i never got my hands on it and it's one of those releases that i kind of wish i did but the four burials split parasitic put out this is just like look look at that track list like these four bands and these four songs alone are just absolute masterpieces of funeral and death doom metal like it's absolutely devastating stuff and like the mournful congregation song on here especially left unspoken like the music and lyrics were written in 1995 and 96 but they didn't record this until 2007, which is fucking awesome. But the track we're listening to by Loss was recorded in anxiety and depression. Absolute. September 8th, 2007 at Compass Studio and Eastwood Sound, Nashville, Tennessee. And yeah, doom your life. Get into Loss. If you've never heard them before, this is a great place to start, but wow. Absolutely just some of the saddest funeral doom in the game. And I'm not just saying that, like, I remember when I first heard them, I was just like... Because I was going through some shit, and it was something I could personally relate to. Like, the isolation I felt, and... Using, like, drugs as a pretty much a safety net for, you know, escapism. And that's something you should never do. And having a sonic representation of my feelings is something that's very hard to come across. And that's one of the things that makes the Four Burials comp, in my opinion an essential slab of doom metal and I know it might be hard to come by but just listen to that like wow Loss is one of those bands I really feel kind of get the short end of the doom metal stick like don't get me wrong like I said they really had shit going with like Horizonless and then I feel like just you know Doom kind of took a back seat to this resurgence of this new wave of American death metal. And I love American death metal, but like, you know, seeing some of my favorite, like, subgenres take a back seat for a few years was kind of a bummer. But at the same time, you know, there's some of us fans that, you know, we don't miss out on Funeral Doom shit. And. It made it a lot easier to get certain releases. But one of those releases that honestly... Hold on one sec. It surprises me that it's still available on Parasitic Records. And that is... The debut and only full-length record by Anhedonist Netherwards. Four tracks of total crushing death doom metal. With riffs ranging from morbid angel sounding to fucking my dying bride. Wow. Parasitic Records did the cassette and vinyl along with Nuclear Winter out of Greece. Dark Descent did the CD version and I think you could still get the CD version from Dark Descent. This is one of those releases that honestly, like, my guitar player and friend Pat, he got a copy of this and was, I was like, dude, 
like, where'd you get a copy of this? And he said eBay, and I was like, ah, fuck. Like, you know, I don't really mess with eBay and stuff. I don't have an account, and I don't have money. <laughs> but uh, I ended up, you know, kind of searching the parasitic cassette page, and I was like, holy fuck. They have this? And it was $7. So, part of the trade, I was like, yo, I'll trade you. It was a dead congregation trade as well. Now, I had doubles, thanks to John Randall, Hales. But I had doubles of a couple dead congregation releases. So, for Sombre Doom and the Rehearsal 7-inch, I was like, yo, you know, Mournful Congregation, the June Frost... And Nether Wards by Anne Hedonist, and we'll call it a day. And I'm pretty sure uh, he also was like, yo, I feel bad, you know, is there anything else you're looking for? And I grabbed the Necrop Mortal tape, which still, <laughs> I don't know where the fuck that thing is. Same with the LP, I don't know what's going on. I'm seeing other people get their copies. But then I'm getting hit up by people like, it's, dude, I have nothing to do with this release, okay? I don't know where your records are, so I don't know why you're hitting me up asking like, yo, do you know where the Necra LPs are? I don't know, so I'm sorry. Like, Merch Table has a wonderful customer service. They have a phone number and everything. Just hit up merch table and they'll help you unless you ordered from the band's band camp that's through a third party so the band can't help you just a heads up so don't go blowing up necrot's instagram asking where's my fucking tape because they went through a third party that runs their band camp shit will come just you know, it's one of those things, it was a release that had like 69 different color variants. It was, you know, it's a gnarly release. When it comes to like death metal, that's probably, you know, one of the biggest death metal releases of the year. So, just chill a little bit. I know I was stressing about it, but I just realized it's out of my hands. It will eventually get here, and Merch Table even said, like, if it doesn't arrive on Friday, we'll send you a new copy. So I was like, alright, fucking A, that works for me. But, when it comes to Anne Hedonist, Nether Wards, these four tracks, it starts off with dead silence, and it just builds and builds and builds, and the record just grows and grows and grows more heavy and more just fucking loaded with atmosphere. Like I said, everything from Morbid Angel to like Turn Loose the Swans Error, My Dying Bride are all represented here. Like, it's one of those releases that I can't recommend enough. Like, if you're a fan of Death Doom Metal, this is one of those bands that my band, A Cursed Womb, we really fucking all love. Like, especially, you know, PH and I are huge fans of this record. Their split with fucking Spectral Voice was such a great send-off as well. And, like, it's kind of a bummer. They lost their guitar player, KH, whose name I honestly forget off the top of my head. But I know he just recently passed away, so that makes this even heavier of a listen just based on knowing that the guitar player, one of the guitar players, is no longer with us. Because we also have VB on guitar and vocals, the mighty Dan fucking Fried on bass, and ZS on drums. And I think Dan Fried also, and this is probably the closest example to An Hedonist as well, that I can show you. Yeah, Dan does bass and vocals on Excarnated Entity, Stillborn in Ash. 
on Extremely Rotten. Now, why this has not gotten a vinyl release boggles my mind. This is one of the best demos, if you even want to call it a demo. Some people will call this an EP. It's just fucking awesome is the way I look at it. These four tracks as well are four tracks that are going to go down in Death Doom history. Like, seriously, I can see this in 15 years being one of those very sought-after releases. And I do like the new logo a lot. Like, I think the new logo is really badass looking. Dave did a great job. And the original, so many bands, you know, have the, uh, their Goffin Worship logo. Including... Well, Atromantius kind of, you know, did their own thing, but you could see the similarities. And that's the thing about, like, Death Doom and Funeral Doom. A lot of bands, they do sound similar. They use similar artists, and there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes I can see why people get confused. Because I showed you the... Bell Witch Mirror Reaper artwork, if you look at that compared to the Atromantius full-length vinyl version, not, not the cassette art. The cassette art is legit night and day, no pun intended, like, compared to the, you know, massism of this man's artwork, which I feel, you know... He's one of the best in the game. And that's Ludanowski. This is the new newest Mizmore release. But the dude's obsessed with, like, the Grim Reaper and just how small man is compared to the unknown of death. And I really like this totem as well, but we're not talking about Mizmore. We're talking about the Pacific Northwest's Anhedonist. Nether Wards. And it's one of those releases as well. Like, you know, it. The art as well. Like, it, it gets to you. And what I mean by gets to you is it makes you feel something. And what I mean by that is, like. Just like all these bodies falling downwards, like, into this abysmal pit it's kind of you know you can view it any way you really want but i look at it as mankind's fall into the bleakness that is depression and i'm pretty sure this is national suicide awareness month and i've lost a few friends to that fucking shit and it's a bummer like you're breaking everyone's heart i've lost my nephew See, I don't even like talking about this, because it's personal shit. He was 20 years old, was not into drugs. And I'm not just making that up, he really wasn't. Because normally, and I'm not trying to, you know, pigeonhole suicide, but I feel like a lot of people who I know, they suffered with drug abuse, and it just took them over the edge. Like, something... I had a friend that couldn't get into a methadone clinic and jumped off a fucking bridge onto a fucking train. Like, holy shit. Imagine being a parent and getting that phone call. It's like heart-wrenching shit. And that's why I feel like releases like Nether Wards are so important because... You can feel someone else's emotions, and when it comes to the lyrical content and stuff, it's great that they fucking wrote the lyrics, because these are very, very relatable at times. And, like, tearing you down forever, cesspool of grief and sorrow, I'll never forget their screams. Like, there's certain lines in here that's just like, wow. The world offers nothing. I don't need your love. Feed the worms. Forfeit the body. Like, 
heavy, heavy subject matter when it comes to the lyrical contents of this fucking monster. And Nether Wards by Anne Hedonist, it's a death doom essential. Like, seriously, especially if you enjoyed their track with Spectral Voice on the split, if you were lucky enough to get one of those 7 inches, um, 99.9% .9 sure it is not getting a repress. The last I talked to a certain person that has that information, they were actually a little upset. Like, they were like, you know, ah oh, man, like, it sold out so fast and I don't think it's getting a repress. And he asked me too, he was like, yo, like, did you get a copy? I was like, yeah, like, I 100% got one. Like, plain black vinyl, it's something that to me, I don't, it doesn't need to be a color and I've been thinking a lot lately about colored LPs. They don't fucking matter, really. But there's certain times where, you know, you do want to get in early. Like, if it's a band like Blood Incantation, I just want to show my fucking support and get, you know, whatever copy I can get. But I was lucky enough to be a fan before Star Spawn. So I kind of knew, like, all right, you know, I got to grab this motherfucker. And... I still missed out on the colored version, but the band was rad enough. And this is why, like, a band like Blood Incantation is so fucking cool. They treat their fans with respect. And they gave me a gnarly gift. And, like, inside of that gift was the split 7-inch with Spectral Voice and Blood Incantation. Now, this was a couple years ago, mind you. This was right after they had played Philadelphia for the first time as Blood Incantation. They had played a Spectral Voice like a year before, I think it was. But they were rad enough to send over the colored first press of Star Spawn. So, I ended up with three copies of Star Spawn because I have the picture disc, the black version, and the red colored LP. And it's just... And I also have the cassette, so... <laughs> I'm a total fucking nerd about Blood Incantation. You guys and girls know that, but... We're here to talk about and he Hedonist and... How fucking important I feel they are. Especially for those of you ladies and gentlemen that suffer from anxiety. Like myself. Depression. This is one of those releases that makes you not feel so alone in the world. And you know when you read the lyrics it's like I know exactly what he's talking about. You know. And these four tracks are just massive tomes of death doom metal. Like I said, it's fucking great. I love this shit. And the fact, you know, this is still available goes to show that I don't know if Tim found like a case of cassettes or something, but this is one of those releases that I can't stress enough. To get a copy now, because once this is gone, I don't think it's coming back. So, go on Parasitic's website, and if you have the if you have the money, do yourself a favor. If you're into cassette tapes, grab the cassette. If you're into CDs, Dark Descent should have you covered. I didn't check, so I'm not entirely sure, but... They did put out the CD version of this bad boy, so they should have copies available. But if not, you might have to become a fan of cassettes. But I want to see who engineered this and everything. This was mastered by Dan Lowndes at Renaissance Sound Studio. I wish I had, you know, money because I would love for Dan Lowndes to master the Cursed Womb full length. Um, not mentioning anything else about it because we're still, you know, 
working on the, well, the demo is done, but, like, we're just starting to trickle it out onto the internet and stuff, so definitely check out our, we have a page now on Facebook, I made a, it's a group, actually, I, I, I'm such a fucking idiot when it comes to that shit, because I don't have a computer, I, I just, I, I didn't know how to make a new page, like, I had the old Skeleton Proof Tanks page, which I tried to rename a cursed womb, and I was like, oh, I'll just use this, and, you know, rest in peace, Skeleton Proof Tanks, forever, but that's not the case, I ended up changing the art, but it's still Skeleton Proof Tanks, but... I made a group for a cursed womb. So add the group on Facebook and add us on Instagram. I hate, you know, I, I sound like one of those like media whores, but like, you know, I'm not being like, make sure to click like and subscribe. Whoa. Like, I'm, nah, that's not me. I'm not that type of person. Like, somebody asked me, like, why don't you do the metalhead box sets? Like, I never was asked to, and I'm not gonna fucking hit them up and be like, yo, you give everybody else one, I'm, well, I want one too. If they wanted me to review one of their boxes, they would have hit me up and said, hey, you want to review one of our box sets? But, nah, they didn't do that, and I'm not gonna beg, and I really, honestly, I, I don't really care. Like, I, I don't. I mean, it would be cool, but, like, I don't care. But that might give me something, you know, to fucking rip on. And I think that's what they might be a little scared of. Because, you know, they put some shit in there sometimes where, like... I watched somebody else sent me a link. And they were like, yo, watch this kid's channel. And I watched one of his videos. And he was, like, opening the box. And it was fucking kind of lame. Like... But he, you could tell he just wanted to please, like, you know, everybody watching, like, and not, you know, single anybody out that likes certain bands and whatnot. It was kind of funny, but, you know, it is what it is. I'll stick to fucking listening to some underground death doom metal, like Anhedonist, Nether Wards. This is pretty much as heavy and as nearly perfect as it gets when it comes to death doom metal like this isn't some cyanide material or anything like that that's a completely different form of death doom metal this is more funeral death doom but at the same time it is straight up death doom at times like where it's just absolutely devastatingly heavy and it's fucking great and hedonist nether wards get into it because it's a fucking modern classic like seriously but we were blasting the lost track of the four burials comp or split i don't know how to call this a comp or a split i guess it's a split because it's four bands but like lost to pass away death march towards my ruin Awesome stuff. And I just want to read one line. They trudge through Falls Fog. This march towards my ruin. A dying light of final breath. Autumn winds and November. Bring scars like graves in my skin. March. 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 The casket is oak. Bars tarnished brass, pallbearers in cloaks, morbid burial mass. Fuck yeah. If you can get your hands on the four burial split, do it. But as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Hails to Damien Fenton for sending this over. Seriously, you have no idea how important the two records you sent me are. Like, seriously, fucking hails, dude. If you don't know who Damien is, just go look him up on, you know, the internet and you can see what bands he's in. Because you're going to be like, what the fuck? 
he played on that and he played on this. Like, yeah, he's one of those guys that he is so fucking talented. And I'm not kissing ass either. He's a talented fucking dude. But as always, thanks for watching, you fucking roll. Peace. Yeah.